So we're watching Ninja Turtles today in IMAX 3D. My friends are inside the theater right now. Movie doesn't start like another 25 minutes. It's going. Do you want to I'll let you. I'll let you. Someone is creating a device that amplifies paranormal activity. Oh, that day So I'm sorry that the light's gonna reflect off me a little bit. Um, I tried fixing it, but it won't work for some reason. But anyways, I got back from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Out of the Shadows and IMAX 3D. Um, yes, I was willing enough to pay extra money to see it in IMAX 3D. And we'll get to that in a little bit after I review this movie. Um, before I start off this review, let me just say I'm a huge Ninja Turtles fan. I loved Ninja Turtles ever since I saw that. Um, animated show back then and then I watched the 2007 animated movie two times in theaters I'm not lying when I say that I still love it back then I was a huge Ninja Turtles um, you know fan back then and my keychains are all the four Ninja Turtles like you know we have Raph here um, Donatello Michelangelo he's my favorite out of the four and Leonardo um, Yes, I owned all of them in keychain form, in label form, and the theater gave these out, the tattoos, but I, I don't think I'll ever use them. But anyways, let's get to the review. So Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 is the sequel to the 2014 reboot of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So the turtles are finally getting out of the shadows, you know, title of the movie. And they're basically exposing themselves a little bit more to the public. And Shredder gets put into custody after the events of the first movie. He escapes from that from the help of Baxter Stuckman, who is this evil scientist um, who basically creates the purple ooze to turn humans into animals. And he obviously turned two guys, Bebop and Rocksteady, into a pig and a rhino. And, you know, the turtles actually hear that Shredder actually escaped from prison, and that's no no good news to them so they decide to go behind shredder and at the same time they're basically actually going after rocksteady and Be bebop and rocksteady because um you know they're basically working with shredder and you know turtles also decide to go after the purple ooze to stop from any future destruction from happening unfortunately you know krang he basically gets the news of this and he also teams up with shredder to basically destroy all New York City city, and that's what basically happens in this movie. So the plot, um, it was kinda hard to, you know, give away the plot without giving away any spoilers. So um I sounded a little bit confused, but that's just me not trying to give out any spoilers to you guys. And Ninja Turtles, what what can I say about this movie? Okay, to start off with, I do agree this is a improvement from the first movie. Um, I did rewatch the first movie and I did find a lot more problems with it knowing that they tried to focus more on April O'Neil than on the turtles in the first movie and in this movie it's everything turtles you know it starts off with turtles it's the middle everything in the middle is with turtles and it ends with turtles and that's good for you know us Ninja Turtles fans because we want when we pay to see a movie called Ninja Turtles we obviously want to see more Ninja Turtles than any other human in this movie. And, you know, that's just good. I'm glad that they actually learned from their mistakes from the first movie. Turtles actually feel like brothers in this movie. You could feel the brotherhood in this movie. Because in the first movie, 
after seeing it, like, I saw it for the sixth time this week, believe it or not, um, the first movie, they basically feel like they're just friends, that's it. Um, they get mad at each other for little stupid things, and in this movie, they actually feel like brothers, they actually, you know, kind of forgive themselves for a lot of stuff, stupid stuff that they may do and all that, and they, I just, you know, that's, that's how you keep Ninja Turtles, they need to feel like brothers, and they need to feel like they always are by their side, you know, no matter what. I'm just going to straight off say this. Splinter, he did feel like an asshole to the turtles in the first movie. And in this one, he actually feels like a sensei of the turtles. And again, improvement. Megan Fox, I guess she does improve a little bit more of her acting from the first movie. This movie, she looked like she was having fun in this movie. And she looked like the April O'Neil we deserved in the first place. And Will Arnett's character, he doesn't feel too too forced into this story. He has a reason to be there. Like in the first one, he kind of felt a little bit forced into the story for the first movie. And in this movie, um, he's not as annoying or as over the top as he was in the first movie. And they definitely improved his character a lot in this movie. Stefan Amell, he, he does very well in this movie. He goes from Arrow to you know, Casey Jones in this movie, and he just does a awesome job, you know, he nailed it as this character, and he just did a great job, I just want to see more of him, um, hopefully for a third movie. The guy who played Shredder, he felt a little bit more threatening, Tyra Perry as, um, not Shredder, as Baxter Stockman, he did a great job, he was meant for this role, he was over the top like he needs to be. He felt like Lex Luthor and Batman vs. Superman. WWE star Shemis as um, Rocksteady and Gary Anthony Williams as Bebop. They did a really good job as in bringing these characters to life. This is actually the first time we actually get to see them in the big screen. And, you know, they have a... They feel like brothers. They, you know, they actually nailed it because, you know, when you think of Bebop and Rocksteady, they're supposed to feel like brothers, even though they're not, and they actually do feel like brothers in this movie, like the Turtles in this movie. You know, the story was fun and simple. It was just a simple story of a villain trying to destroy a world, you know. Um, it is directed by Dave Green. He did direct Earth to Echo, which was a heartwarming film. And, you know, he obviously can't make this over-the-top violent movie for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so he had to make it a little bit more cheesy, and it did work out for the tone of this movie. And the script, the script has minor issues, but, you know, it was a fun enough time at the movies. We do have some what-the-hell moments in this movie. Um, by that, I mean some moments where it doesn't feel too realistic after all. And sometimes you're like, how did that character not die? You know, um, I know you're trying to appeal to a younger audience, but still keep it a little bit more realistic. On to the IMAX. The IMAX was a last minute decision. Um, when you think of IMAX, you think it's going to fill the whole entire IMAX screen, but it just filled half of it. Um, it was just a wide screen. And if you're just there just to see it in full screen, then you're not going to, unfortunately, you're not going to get the full screen experience. But if you love audio, then I definitely recommend you to check out Ninja Turtles and IMAX 3D because the audio actually vibrates the theater and you actually feel like you're inside the movie and you know so I'm going to say Ninja Turtles is a fun time in IMAX if you have the money. If you're not going to see it in IMAX 3D definitely see it at least in regular 3D because 3D is amazing in this movie. You have pieces of the airplane popping out, a basketball, um, that missile scene it literally had me in my see like this and definitely worth every penny it's an amazing 3d conversion and it's amazing check it out in 3d about two different ratings as a regular movie goer and as a ninja turtles fan if i were a regular movie goer i say this movie's a 8 out of 10 or a b plus but as a ninja turtles fan this movie is a 9.3 out of 10 or an a ninja turtles fan will dig this and love this movie anyways what you think about it and i'll see you guys for my next movie day